thanks for having me here. I'm here to talk to you about some works in progress on the automation of function selection for patch testing by chopped symbolic execution. Patch testing is important because programs change all the time. So we would like to construct automatic test cases that cover the patch in order to ensure the soundness of the analysis. In order to do this, one way to go about it is symbolic execution. The problem with symbolic execution is that it is expensive. It suffers from the well-known path explosion problem and constraint solving in general is hard. One way to go around this is Chopper. Chopper implements chopped symbolic execution. It is a key based tool and the general idea behind it is to skip parts of the code that are not interesting. In the context of patch testing, these are functions that are irrelevant to the patch. Currently, the main challenge with Chopper is that it requires manual function selection. That is, you need to have an expert user that selects which functions should be skipped. In a nutshell, Chopper is lazy execution of skipped functions. So first, you select functions that you want to skip. Then you keep snapshots to the execution states pointing at these function calls. Then you monitor dependencies to the data that these functions write. And you trigger recoveries when you need to. Graphically, it looks like this. You will execute the program symbolically with Klee, as you will normally would, until you reach a function call to a function that you would like to skip. For example, here, f. You keep a snapshot of the execution state of that function right before the call, and you move on with the symbolic execution. If you do not reach any point where there's a dependency to the data modified by f, then you're happy because essentially you sliced away part of the code, thereby alleviating some of the path explosion problem. On the other side, if you meet a dependency, for example, a read on y, which is modified by f, then you have to trigger a recovery to keep the analysis sound. So you take the state from the snapshot and you recover the function, especially the parts of the function that modify y. So here we execute y++ and we return with this recovery data that we incorporate in the dependent state. This way we can continue the symbolic execution and the analysis is sound. One problem with this approach is that recoveries are costly. If you have a lot of dependencies to a function, then you are going to trigger as many recoveries and it may be not worthwhile to skip it because the recoveries are going to be more expensive than just executing the function in the first place. So in order for this approach to be efficient to work, it needs good function selection, usually provided by a user. The tool we are developing, AutoChopper, aims to automate this function selection. It is essentially Chopper with automatic function selection. So what are good functions to skip? Well, first, it should be average sized. If the function is tiny, it is not worth skipping. If the function is huge, at the contrary, it's very likely to have some dependencies and to trigger recovery at some point thereby not making it worthwhile to skip. Also, ideally, it should have many forks because skipping a function that causes forks helps a lot with scalability. It is the root of the path explosion problem. And finally, it should be unlikely to cause recoveries. First, it should be unrelated to the patch because obviously, if it is, then we will have to execute it at some point sooner or later. 
and it should have few side effects. An ideal candidate for skipping would be cleanup functions. A cleanup function does not produce any data that is useful and that should be used later, so it can be safely skipped. And finally, it shouldn't have any external side effects, for example, the write function that interacts with the file system, because those are difficult to model and snapshot. However, even with all of this, it is very difficult to predict recoveries. And so, recoveries can still happen, and they can also be very costly. They can be so costly that it is actually more worthwhile to interrupt the recoveries and restart the analysis without skipping the function, hence not having the recovery problem in the first place. So how does AutoChopper work? We start with a static pass that lists the functions it should be keeping at all cost. Those are the functions that are on any path from the main, the program entry, to the patch. So for example here, F2, F3, and F5 should be kept. Once it's got this initial list of functions to, to keep, those are the static heuristics that build the keep list of functions not to skip. And it starts to chop up a first time with skipping all the functions, but those that were said to keep. Then triggers a dynamic pass that restarts the analysis when needed. So we execute key as we normally would until we reach a long recovery. We interrupt the recovery if we deem it worthwhile, and we add the function to the list of functions that should be kept. Then we restart the analysis, and we do so until we reach a timeout, out of memory, or success, which will be that we have an input covering the patch. A third component of CLI is a target searcher. We have searcher heuristics that look for the shortest path to the patch. We have applied this approach on the original benchmarks that Chopper was evaluated against. Those are the LibTSN1 CVEs. Those vulnerabilities are much like patch testing, except instead of looking to reach a patch, we're going to lo be looking to reproduce a vulnerability. These are all using the target searcher, which was implemented in CLI. Those benchmarks show, as in the previously published paper, that Chopper performs better than CLI, alleviating some of the timeouts. Now, it also shows that Auto Chopper is performing comparatively well to Chopper, sometimes doing worse, sometimes doing better, but without the need for a user input. We have also evaluated this approach with different searches, such as DFS and coverage. Interestingly enough, both Chopper and Auto Chopper have two timeouts on two different benchmarks, and they do not overlap, meaning that sometimes the user selection of functions is better, and sometimes the automatic selection is better. We have gone further with this and directly applied this approach to patch testing. We have taken a program's Git history and we passed through the entire Git history. And for each commit, we run a set of tools that give us a bytecode file to analyze and also split the commit into a set of diff chunks that correspond to basic blocks. For each basic block, we take the first file line and feed it to AutoChopper. There will be as many calls to AutoChopper as there are basic blocks. Now, this is still ongoing works, but we have some preliminary results on at least two benchmarks, LibOSIP and BC. We have run both Key and AutoChopper on these benchmarks. 
with a timeout of 15 minutes. We took uh, a set of most recent commits for these benchmarks. For LibreSips, it is eight, 1,850 basic blocks over 38 commits. Those are large commits. And for BC, about the same amount of basic blocks over many more commits. Out of these basic blocks, we only reach a limited amount because for LibreSip of driver issues, where we are not able to reach the whole library. So we still have about a thousand of them for LibreSip and almost all of them for BC, which is not a library. Running both approaches on LibreSip, we get 13% success and double that on AutoChopper. So we have increased coverage. On BC, however, because of various engineering issues, but also because um, AutoChopper struggles to find a good list of functions to skip, Klee is actually performing slightly better than AutoChopper. In conclusion, we have successfully automated chopped symbolic execution, nearing Chopper's performances without the need for user input. We even have some pre-results in automated patch testing. Ongoing challenges include adding more benchmarks, such as binutils and writing drivers for libtsn1 and libyaml, as well as preserve debug information better, because sometimes it is not reachable because debug information was lost at compile time. Finally, in order to scale better, especially for longer timeouts, we'd like to rewind symbolic execution to the snapshot instead of restarting the whole analysis. That's it for me. I'm ready to hear any questions if you have any.